Last month, Rolling Stones published a story alleging that Ballinger had engaged in inappropriate behavior with underage fans. And the magazine verified screenshots of texts in which Ballinger asked a minor about their status and their favorite position. She also asked them to send pictures of their bodies. However inappropriate her alleged behavior was, the article clarified that no sexual crime has been committed and that no evidence in review even hinted at the possibility that Ballinger had intended to start the sexual relationship with a child. Ballinger did not respond to the Rolling Stones' multiple requests for comments. So it seems like they really like glaze over the part that she had in appropriate relations with minors. They're literally saying, oh, even though her behavior wasn't great, it could be worse. Many of these claims are not new. Ballinger has even responded to some of them on YouTube, of course. Rolling Stones' piece was tame, allegedly sound, one could argue, compared to the language and rumors that have been flying around her for years. So yes, the Rolling Stone article is very tame compared to everything else that has been coming out and being said. And I think it's just they're just trying to use the facts as clearly as they could without it being having to be like censored or being inappropriate for people to read kind of thing. A few days after the Rolling Stone piece went live, HuffPost published its own investigation report. Her fans say she groomed them as teens. In the ensuing weeks, Ballinger would be accused of everything from performing a Beyonce song in blackface as Miranda sings, to texting a sex worker's photos to a minor. Ballinger's legal team has denied she performed in blackface, saying that saying she was wearing green face paint for a prior cover of a song from Wicked. Also point out that Ballinger's legal team doesn't deny anything until it comes to the blackface allegations that's when they start denying things. And that's the only thing they probably deny, saying that it was never blackface, that it was greenface paint, which is prob probably because it's the only thing she can deny. The reality of some of these claims and in turn the broader narrative around Ballinger remains murky. Nothing remains murky. There is evidence, there is proof. We have seen all the evidence, we have seen the proof. The only person we haven't heard from is Colleen. Various allegations were made unverified, left to endless circulation, as they fall under the ever-expanding umbrella of inappropriate behavior. I don't even, I don't even know where to start with this. The text messages are there, those are not photoshopped images. And then again, inappropriate behavior. Like trying to state her behavior wasn't inappropriate, it was inappropriate. This article is literally taking all the information and trying to make it sound as wishy-washy as they can and make Colleen not look bad while still using the facts. She brought teens into, a, into an adult world and made it feel like it was theirs, then saw those fans turn against her. The fans that turned against her were the fans that she made feel uncomfortable. If she didn't want these fans to not love her anymore and praise her, then maybe she should not have been so inappropriate with them. The YouTube drama unfolded between Ballinger and her former fan, Adam McIntyre, a then 17 year old. On June 22nd, 2020, McIntyre posted a video to his channel titled Colleen Ballinger Stop Lying. In it, McIntyre told several seamlessly unrelated stories. One recounting the time Ballinger sent him lingerie in the mail. To his mother's horror, the lingerie was new and unworn and Ballinger since apologized for sending it. We're just, we're gonna stop there for a minute. I don't care if the lingerie was new and unworn. Like literally that does not mean anything. That does not need to be in the article really, I don't think. And I think that's just another way this article is trying to make Colleen look like less of a bad guy. There is our videos of that live stream where they tell Adam to take it and they're pushing Adam to want it kind of thing. Like in no way did Adam actually ever ask for the lingerie. It was intended to debunk the rumor that he was secretly behind some anti Miranda Singh social media accounts that Ballinger got in wind of. A third concerned the fallout of a tweet that Ballinger allowed McIntyre to post as Miranda Sings from the character's Twitter account that led him never posting on her behalf again. He'd been considered her social media intern, he said, with hopes of being employed by her one day in that capacity. Ballinger says he only had access to her account for one day and that if it all went well, she planned to hire him formerly. The tweet in question was seized upon as, as queer baiting by Miranda's fandom. She came out as a Megan Trainer fan and led to an intense backlash. So yes, that tweet did get a lot of backlash that Adam posted. 
but it was on Colleen's account. Colleen should never have given her account for anything to a child. I don't care if they're doing your social media for you. You post it. Like, it's not that difficult. It might sound strange to hear that Ballinger put a fan in charge of her character's Twitter to begin with, but that access went in line with her public image. Ballinger was closely aligned with her most devoted young viewers. For her to remove the, that access, as McIntyre explained, felt painful. McIntyre felt that Ballinger was guilting him, selfishly preoccupied with her reputation rather than his feelings. After the backlash, she apologized for the tweet. Later, she denied ever blaming McIntyre and said that she should have reviewed the tweet more carefully. No, it doesn't seem strange. It is strange and it should not have happened. Giving that power, that's a power trip. Giving that power to a child makes them feel important and makes them feel like they're doing something good for you. And then you take that away and that's gonna make them feel like shit. None of Colleen's fans are, are important to her. She just makes them feel important and then tears them down. Then came the Twitter response of McIntyre's YouTube accusations, a classic back and forth. Ballinger 33 at the time of her response to a teenager posting a classic apology blog. She revealed screenshots of Instagram DMs. She went Instagram DMs she sent to McIntyre and one that McIntyre's mother had had sent to her, which seemed to be Ballinger's way of assuring viewers of what really happened. A strategy not unlike McIntyre's. No, that's the same strategy that Adam's using. That's the best strategy to use because you're showing proof. You're showing people what really happened. In a DM, she accused him of going too far, supposedly in response to him asking her to and it's her newborn son being taken advantage of in the exact same way he had been. She also elaborated upon the lingerie incident during a live stream giveaway with her fans. Ballinger explained McIntyre had asked for the article, article of clothing. Okay, so we're going to start with he was a teenager when this all went down. Okay, he was a teenager when these videos came out. So for her saying that he went too far, telling her she should imagine her newborn being taken advantage like this. Yes, that is way too far. But he was a kid. He didn't understand that that was too far. He was a teenager. He was, he was trying to throw a jab at someone who hurt him. And we all know teenagers say stupid shit that they can't take back and they don't mean. Because they're kids still. And he was still a kid. And him saying that yes is bad, but he doesn't understand the emotional impact that would take on her. Compared to what she has said about him and has said to him, she should understand the emotional impact that would take on him. And Adam has shown this live stream, has shown the pressure that she put him through. McIntyre established a new identity as Ballinger's whistleblower, frequently posting new videos and, ra and racking up hundreds of thousands of views by commenting on the, the hypocrisy of her every move. Bullied him in a way for being a whistleblower of Colleen. He was the first one to come out about his experience, which then caused other people to come out and, and talk about their experiences. Colleen should not have a fan base, definitely of children. So he was just trying to help them feel, help other people know that their feelings are valid and what happened to them is valid. On June 7th, McIntyre posted an anti-Ballinger video, and this one was titled My Relationship with Colleen Ballinger. He had new details he claimed describing staying up with her back when they were close and listening to her talk about her divorce. According to McIntyre, she embroiled him in a hateful campaign against her ex-husband, and then he came to the realization that shocked YouTube. This woman used me. This woman groomed me. He's not wrong. She did use him. She used all of her fans, and the perception of Ballinger as a groomer nonetheless snowballed. Ballinger eventually decided to, what else, post another video on YouTube. She took out her ukulele and awkwardly sung through her defense, implying the internet seized upon allegations that she's a groomer for entertainment. She said she wanted to be friends with her fans. She admitted that desire was wrong. I'm not a groomer. She's saying I'm just a loser. Yeah, Colleen came after all the snowballed. She made a video, which was a disgrace of an I I'm sorry video. She never apologized in this video. She's saying about her allegations, barely. The apology was roundly mocked, especially on YouTube where parodies have already gotten millions of views. Back then, a teenager McIntyre hoped for sympathy, another chance, a way back into the Ballinger fold. The internet is generally too cruel for that. Its judgment's too swift. But one can look at the evaluation of Miranda Sings M and see that the longer it drags out, the harder it is to pin down the exact truth. Justifiably, outrage turns into silly memes and headlines and videos. If there's one thing the saga of Colleen Ballinger and her fans have taught us, it's that today's YouTube winner is tomorrow's loser. Adam never posted any of this to try to get into, back into Colleen's folds of things. He posted all of this to be heard and so other people can know that they're heard and that their feelings are valid. We're not pinning down the exact truth. 
We have the exact truth. We know what happens. There has been proof. The only person who hasn't speaked out is Colleen. Further monetizing her 10 minute ukulele yeah. song by uploading it to streaming platforms. That's so Now, like... this is really concerning, and her legal team has spoken on this and said, no, it wasn't her that uploaded it. It was, must have been somebody else. She would never do She would do that. She would upload them. Have you not seen what she's done so far? She has done terrible things, and this isn't going to stop her from doing those terrible things. She 100% uploaded them, and now her legal team's trying to clean up this mess that she's made. Look, like, they've been trying to clean up every other mess that she's made, but she just keeps making messes, and she doesn't quit. You know, it's it's a kind of a smart move of her, really, um, because she can copyright smart. claim every reaction video about her and earn money with all of this. This is a very smart move because, yes, yeah, she can now make money off of it. So everyone who's made videos about this, she can get all the revenue or some of the revenue, however she wants to do it. But it's not smart in the way of if she is trying to save her image at all, she's just she's burning it more. Like, I feel like she understands that she has completely ruined her image. And instead of trying to fix it, she just keeps making it worse because what else is she going to do? She might as well make money while she can because her image is completely gone. Now, what's interesting is that Colleen has cancelled all of her upcoming shows. And obviously her podcast wow. was also cancelled, the one with Trish Paytas. Um, but yeah, the yeah, fact that she's cancelled sure all her shows shows that she is embarrassed and humiliated. Um, not really sure how she's going to come back from this, to be honest. She's not coming back from this. She, if she comes back from this, I'm going to honestly be surprised. Like, I am surprised that she even cancelled the rest of her shows, to be honest with you. Because I, I said this in a past video that she should have been canceling her shows when this first all happened, but she didn't. And I think she is canceling her shows because, like, no one's going to them now. They have, like, people keep, like, not wanting to go and stuff. So I think it's costing them more money to keep the show going than just to cancel it for a bit. I feel like if Trisha didn't cancel the podcast, she would have wanted to still do the podcast. It's Trisha who was, like... We're going to step back for a hot second. I also think it's very rich of Trisha Paytas to be making videos about Colleen, especially considering her past. But people don't want to bring that up, do they? They want to say that she's a changed person. Well, what happens if one day Colleen is a changed person? Then what? Do you know what I mean? It's just, it's very rich. It's very rich coming from Trisha. I don't think people are just forgetting what Trisha did. No one's forgetting what Trisha did. No one's commenting on what Trisha did because it's not relevant right now. I don't care who you are. Having your pictures sent to minors without your permission and being made fun of and having showing parties and make fun of them by a person who you thought is your friend is devastating. And I don't care who that happens to. I think they have a right to be upset and have a right to talk about it because it happened to them. They have a right to say, hey, I did not know this was happening and saying that she does not approve of what Colleen did because it's her pictures. It's her life too. It's her life being affected as well. In no way do I like Trisha. Do I condone anything Trisha has done? But I don't think Trisha's past and what she has done should affect what is happening to her right now. The fact that she allegedly was profiting off her apology video in multiple ways by yeah, uploading it to like, streaming platforms, what the like, hell? I'm seriously bloody concerned. What is going on that she thinks this is a good idea? Like, I would like to know why she thinks this is a good idea because it is concerning. It is concerning that she took a song that was supposed to be an apology, mocked everyone, mocked every victim, and goes and puts it on like iTunes and Spotify and everything. Like. Girl, calm down. You do not need to be profiting off of this song. You have ruined so many lives already. How about you stop for a hot second and just let this pass? Tomorrow, but the fun news, or if you can call it that, is that Colleen <laughs> claimed our video. Isn't that awesome? She actually what the put hell? Her, she put her song on CD Baby and is claiming shit. Like, holy crap. Oh my Nothing God. says authentic. Okay, now the word is getting around. Um, yeah, it is unreal. I tweeted That's it yesterday. Insane. It happened about an hour after we posted. And I'm wondering, I said Colleen Ballinger. That is so sad. After the toxic gossip train to CD Baby and claiming us. So here it is. She was generous enough to do her sharing revenue. Yeah, right. I'm just, guys, don't worry. I'm just. Oh, disputing. look at her. At least sharing the money. You guys know me. I take care of this shit. She's not going to get a dollar. You dispute this That's shit. It's annoying. It could take like two months to resolve if she really wants to be petty about it. Yeah. But I know how to navigate this shit. 
she, she's not gonna do anything. It's just annoying and funny. I mean, and crazy. This is like the icing oh, on the cake so of the funny. weird. You guys think she was watching last time? Well, she. I hadn't heard of anyone else being claimed, <laughs> and then we got claimed about an hour after the podcast. Yeah. So as you guys know, I have done videos with the song in it. We haven't been claimed from it, and I'm so glad he's going to dispute this because in no way should she get any money from it. And like, good for him for disputing it. Good on him. And I hope this dispute goes easy, fast, and well for him because we have we've had to dispute on this channel before, and it's tiring. It can take forever. It holds your money like it it isn't great so i'm glad that he is disputing it i really hope this goes easy for him i think she's just trying to claim any big creators that have done anything with the song so she can get the most money like i don't think she cares about small creators doing it i really think she's just looking at oh this is a big channel let's copyright on it and then i can get some money off of it and like make real money off of it instead of trying to copyright every single channel